Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Geography now, the Balkans. Let's do it. Original link to the video, top of the description, right below that link to the Discord. Click on it, send you, send you, send you right over there. Would love to have you. Let's go. Preemptive like. Awesome channel. My name is Connor. If you are new, I like to learn things. Let's go. Hey everybody, so as you know, I'm working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is going to be a filler week. Heavily requested, but never really fulfilled until now. The Balkans Explained, aka Europe's most dysfunctional family. Before There's a super cool, uh, like, bowl in this mountain range. I forget what the mountain range is called. It's, 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 it's sort of connected to the Alps, but it's it's more east and it circles around a like valley that i think is where hungry is but yeah that, that's cool before we get into this though, just want to give a quick shout out to one of my favorite brands to work with, Cetera. You guys know I'm very picky with which brands we get to sponsor here on Geography Now, and Cetera is definitely cool on my list. Cetera. Yeah, great. I, I've played many uh, qu quizzes here. It's great. It's a geography learning game. Go to their website to find out more. Download the app if you want, or you can play for free on the website. Cetera. Thank you. Anyway, back to the Balkans. Now, if you look at the map of Southern Europe, you see this whole mess and you're like, the hell is going on? Basically, this place has a lot of weird history. Everybody loves and hates each other. These two countries can understand each other when they speak, as can these four, but they all swear it's distinct different languages. In What is that? So Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, is that Albania? What is that? Kosovo? Is in modern times today, generally they're all kind of cool with each other, and the younger generation has pretty much moved on from all that animosity that their grandparents endured during war times. Like, I've heard Greek people say, hey, I've traveled to Albania and Turkey, the nations of our enemies, and yet they were, like, totally treated fine by the locals when they told them that they were Greek and they had a great time. So it's pretty much like that. Like, mostly the government and the zealous people are just the ones that create the modern drama. Quick historical context, this entire area at one point was ruled over the Ottoman Empire, then during the 20th century half of it was Yugoslavia, wars, battles, music, and Rakia. Done. Geographically speaking, Rakia. what exactly are the boundaries of the Balkans? Apparently, the Balkan Peninsula is surrounded by the Adriatic Sea to the west, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and the Black Sea to the east. Its northern boundary is often given as the Danube, Sava, and Kupa rivers. Or Interesting how the, it kind of cut Serbia, Croatia, and Slovenia in half, or or the Balkan and Dinaric Alps mountain ranges. The countries that lie entirely in the area include Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Montenegro, and the newly named North Macedonia, as well as the disputed partially recognized Kosovo area and parts of Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia. Slovenia, most of Greece, and a very small part of Romania, Turkey, and even Italy. In this episode, though, we're just going to talk about the major Balkan nations that are either completely or mostly located within the Balkan area. So no Italy, and I talked to some Romanian people, and a lot of them said, nah, we're not Balkan. Balkan, we're just our own thing in Southern Europe. So I'm not going to talk about Romania. And with that being said, let's start off alphabetically. Albania. Ooh, Albania. Was Why is it nobody wants to be called Eastern Europe? Is that like a, uh, is it like a holdover from the Soviet Union? It's like Poland. I heard like in a video, like Poland likes to see themselves as Central Europe. And, you know, Romania is like so Southern. It's like nobody wants to identify as like an Eastern European country. Am I, am I just reading that out of nowhere, or am I sensing a trend? One of the first episodes I made, that was so long ago. Out of all the Balkan nations, Albania is probably like the one that sticks out like a sore thumb the most. It's More like the Muslim, oddball that right? doesn't quite fit in. It's like the emo kid at the dinner table. Their language has no other relatives, and they have a bunch of these like dome bunkers all over the country because their former leader was kind of paranoid. I mean, come on, Albanians, let's be real. And for Hoha, he was a little intense. About half the country is Muslim, which is interesting because they went through a weird communist era in which all religious practice was banned and illegal, but like the religious religious community still kind of held on for the longest time they were actually closed off to the entire world i thought it was was more than half but okay i learned something there 
world except China. To kind of held on. For the longest time, they were actually closed off to the entire world except China. Today, however, they are completely opened up and a lot of like intrepid Europeans like to travel here because there's a lot of like secret hidden beaches. Everything here is cheap. They are a candidate to join the EU. However, they still have some political obstacles that they have to overcome in order to join. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they kind of don't really get along well with Serbia because of the whole Kosovo thing, which we will explain in a bit. Bosnia and Herzegovina, our first South Slavic nation. This is the most confusing political entity in, I would argue, the entire world. Just watch the episode if you want to recap, but basically they have three constituent people groups. No other country has this. Maybe kind of Comoros, but that's a little different. And it's weird because like everything here comes in threes. The Bosnians or Bosniaks are mostly Muslim, the Serbians are mostly Orthodox, and the Croatians are mostly Catholic. The country is divided good. into three- that, That's a recipe for not good. Three parts. Or parts. This, shouldn't... this all happened are mostly Orthodox and the Croatians are mostly Catholic. The country is divided into three parts. This all happened because after the breakup of Yugoslavia, there was a Bosnian war, yada yada yada, and here we are. What's even crazier is they have three presidents, one for each of the constituent groups. And even weirder, they all pretty much speak the same language, but they are very keen to make sure that they distinguish that it's Croatian, Serbian, and Bosnian. Like, it's all basically the same thing, but they still, like, distinguish it. The country is almost completely landlocked, but they have this small little 20 kilometer long coast on the Adriatic. Uh, but yeah, for what it's worth uh they have a really cool art and music scene they hosted the winter olympics in sarajevo three presidents i'm still thinking of that so w what if like there's like a big decision i guess like wh whoever gets the majority like two out of three you still see some of the remnants of the Ottoman Empire and things like food and architecture. And yeah, interesting place that not a lot of people talk about. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah, I'll Bulgaria, that, sure. our second. Sorry, guys. That's my other video. Finish it up, boys. Ah, boys. Uh, that was my other video. So I'll react to that, sure. Yeah, interesting place that not a lot of people talk about. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bulgaria, our second Slavic nation. Ah, the land of roses. Every time I get something sent in from Bulgaria for fan mail, it always usually includes something made out of roses. Bulgaria is, how can I put it? It's kind of like the uh, slowly withering beauty. Here's the thing, like Bulgaria is loaded with lots of cool, you know, natural sights and wonders and culture, but like a lot of people are just leaving. Since the early 90s, about a quarter of their entire population has left, making them one of the highest population decline nations in the world. Joining the EU has helped a bit, but they still rank as the poorest nation in the EU. Nonetheless, lots of history started here. They're proud of being known as the place where the Cyrillic alphabet was created by these two brothers. They love their bagpipes. Technically, they're descended from the Bulgars, which like migrated from Asia. So technically, you could say Bulgarians have Asian roots. Bulgarians and Macedonians are pretty much family. I mean, they speak the exact same language almost. In fact, many Bulgarians will say that Macedonians are just kind of like confused Bulgarians. I love the Macedonian flag. I, I think it's just the biggest. Just like with Spain, I think the, the red and yellow just really are nice together. The difference is that North Macedonia was historically part of Yugoslavia, whereas Bulgaria was not. Keep in mind, though, their language is Slavic, but it is not intelligible to the Serbo-Croat Bosnian languages. Like, they can't understand each other. Croatia, our third Slavic nation. Croatia is kind of like the one that got really lucky. It's the land of the best Balkan sunsets. All those uh, Game of Thrones locations. They even have Game of Thrones tours. Croatia is one of the five Catholic-influenced Slavic nations, whereas the rest are predominantly Orthodox. You see a lot of... Italian. So is Croatia like the New Zealand of Game of Thrones? Like, you know how Lord of the Rings filmed a lot of stuff in New Zealand? So a lot of Game of Thrones stuff was... I, I never really watched Game of Thrones much. I had friends that, you know, did, and I kind of watched with them, and mainly in college many moons ago. But, uh... Yeah, uh, uh, continue. Like influenced Slavic nations, whereas the rest are predominantly Orthodox. You see a lot of Italian and ancient Roman influence here. Lots of Italians even live here. They are seafaring folk. Thousands of islands and rocks off the coast. They have the second highest quality of life index in the Balkans. Their tourism sector has just been exploding. So many cool natural and man-made sites. Huge music and art scene here. In fact, one of my favorite bands, Two <gasps> Cellos, was started here. And They're awesome sites huge music and art scene here in fact one of my looked up two cellos they are phenomenal 
favorite bands, Two Cellos, was started here. And uh, yeah, overall, they've pretty much moved on from war times, and uh, they've built up quite a reputation. Croatia. Greece. We all know this one. Very few countries love their culture and history and background as much as Greek people do. Greeks love being Greek. Greece is kind of like the master of history and the remnant to the ancients, the cradle of Western civilization. And now they're known for being loud dancing party animals. Sorry, it's, come on, Greeks, you know it's true. Like Albania, they are a linguistic anomaly. They have no other cousin languages. However, it's interesting because Koine Greek was the lingua franca of the Roman Empire. So you had people all over on three continents speaking Greek, ancient Greek. They are a seafaring powerhouse. Over 6,000 islands and the 11th longest before Latin became the coastline in the world. I'm not going to get into the whole it I'm thousand responding too much. I'm going to the 11th longest coastline in the world. I'm not going to get into the whole economy and EU drama thing. We all know about it. We'll talk about the North Macedonia thing in a bit. But for what it's worth, yeah, Greece is popular. They love Serbians and Serbians love Greece. They've worked historically alongside each other a lot, especially during the fight against the Ottomans. And plus, Serbia also kind of likes how Greece does not recognize Kosovo, which brings us to the partially recognized disputed area of Kosovo. Kosovo is like the weird wild card guy that nobody really wants to get involved in except for Serbia and Albania. If you ask a somewhat nationalistic Serbian, they will probably say Kosovo belongs to Serbia. They are not a country. It is our autonomous province of Kosovo and Metohija. If you ask a Kosovar, they will probably say 102 member states of the UN recognize us. We claimed independence in 2008. We are an observer state of the UN. But then Serbia will say, yeah, but not a full participating member state. Plus, there's a lot of Serbian history and cultural sites in Kosovo. Okay, well, we're still in pretty much in every sense a country. Even your government recognizes our administration. Well, you can claim whatever you want, but no, you're not a country. <laughs> and it goes on. Whatever you want to claim Kosovo is, it's basically like Albania's little brother. The majority of people in Kosovo are Albanian. There was a huge war in the 90s after the breakup of Yugoslavia, which pretty much led to what we have now. And keep in mind, there is a Serbian minority in Kosovo, which is where a lot of the conflict centers around. Whatever you want to consider Kosovo as, basically, it's a place that's kind of trying to move into the 21st century in a weird, awkward way. Tourism is starting to grow, especially amongst intrepid travelers who like to say that they've been to a disputed area. But yeah, probably the biggest controversy of the Balkans. Montenegro, the fourth Slavic country. Ah. I had so much fun making the Montenegro episode because I had no idea how hilarious their reputation was amongst the Balkans. If you didn't watch the episode, basically- Doesn't Montenegro mean Black Mountains? I, I There was a Montenegrin student in one of my classes in college. So because I had no idea how hilarious their reputation was amongst the Balkans. If you didn't watch the episode, basically, Montenegro is the sleepiest country on earth. They even have a lazy Olympics where you can get about 400 euros just for being the person who does nothing for the longest. They're like the ch I would win easily. Easily. Ask anyone on Discord. Chill, lazy, little, hippie sister of Serbia that has access I'm to the beach. Not she a likes hippie. to sleep on the beach. They were the last part of the former Yugoslavian Republic to break away in 2006 from Serbia. Probably because they were sleeping and missed the deadline. They speak pretty much the same language as Serbians, Croats, and Bosnians, but they just have their own little Montenegrin accent. They really don't like getting into drama or conflicts, which is funny because historically they were known for being like really vicious fighters. They get along with pretty much all of their neighbors. However, in the end, Serbia is just kind of like their best friend ish like a lot of montenegrins go to serbia for education and job opportunities and serbia likes to use montenegro for access to the sea the newly named north macedonia ooh, the country that must not be named other than kosovo this is probably the most controversial area in the balkans for the longest time they had gone through a series of disputes and economic blockades mostly against greece all because of the name i don't have too much time to explain just watch the video which is already kind of outdated for the longest time under the un they were labeled as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Many countries called them the Republic of Macedonia. Greeks were not happy because the word Macedonia implies Hellenistic roots when clearly the people of this area are, they're not Greek. They even, they speak a Slavic language, but then the Macedonians have their side of the argument and then it just gets kind of messy. I'm not going to go further into this. But anyway, yeah, the people here are kind of like in a tug of war against everybody around them. I mean, Bulgarians are kind of like, come on, you guys are basically Bulgarians. Just join us. Serbia is like, you guys are kind of cool. And plus you and my Montenegro are the only two countries that kind of split apart from us without any bloodshed, but your church is kind of messed up. Albania is like, I don't like your western border, especially by Lake Ohrid. Culturally, it's a huge mix as well. So you have like a weird orthodox Muslim mixed thing going on.
going on, kind of. They have a lot of preserved Byzantine frescoes and paintings. I was told a lot of Balkan people love going here because everything is like super cheap and they do have pretty good food here. And I mean, if you just kind of like look past all the semantics and like overarching diplomatic issues, then they're just like people that like to eat, have fun and chill. It's just, yeah, government and politics makes things crazy. Serbia. Oh boy, if you ask anybody in the Balkans, they all have an opinion on Serbia. A lot of people will probably say Serbia is kind of like where all the crazy stuff starts. It's the country they all love to hate and hate to love. Like they kind of started and pushed the kingdom of Yugoslavia. They kind of started World War One and the Yugoslav Wars. Let's be honest though, Yugoslavia was kind of like a collective effort. Debatable. I'm not getting into that. I, I don't know if they started. Uh, okay. Okay. I get it. I'm not going to go into that. Kind of started World War One and the Yugoslav Wars. Let's be honest, though. Yugoslavia was kind of like a collective effort. I mean, Tito was Croat Slovene. But then people are like, eh, I guess the new younger generation that never saw war is kind of cool and a little sexy, I guess. And the thing is, for the longest time, Serbia was actually a kingdom apart from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, unlike Croatia and Bosnia, which were part of it. So they're kind of proud of the fact that they kind of like stood their ground. Of course, they are another Slavic nation. They can understand Croatians and Bosnians. They are a negotiating candidate to join the EU. But of course, everything is on hold because of the whole Kosovo thing. Plus, it's interesting because if they did join the EU, that would kind of maybe strain their relations with Russia, which is like one of their closest allies. That's a whole other thing. But I mean, really? there's a lot of history and culture here too. Belgrade is like over 7,000 years old and it was actually Celtic before it was Roman. It was actually voted by Lonely Planet as the city with the best nightlife. They love raspberries and they have like one of the largest Orthodox churches in the world. And like in a nutshell, they are such a key figure in the Balkans. And uh, yeah, what else? Uh, Novak Djokovic. And finally, Slovenia. Slovenia is the richest and most well-off of all the Balkan nations. Their language is kind of intelligible to the Serbo-Bosnian-Croat language, but I heard it's just like a little bit more difficult to understand. They have beautiful world-renowned... Can they be understood by Italians or are they completely unintelligible too? buildings and monasteries. They don't like to cause any drama. They get along very well with Italy. There's a lot of Italians that live here. You know, they're kind of pissed off that Italy got the entire Trieste coast cutting off half. I always saw that. There's a lot of Italians that live here. You know. <laughs> Look, like Italian has this enormous coastline. <laughs> and like, <laughs> and uh, Slovenia, it's like, oh my God, look, I can get this. And Italy's like, you can have that little part. Well, they're kind of pissed off that Italy got the entire Trieste coast, cutting off half of their access to the sea. But eh. And it's kind of like whenever they're at a party with all their cousins, it's like everybody's drinking rakia, but then Slovenia is like the one who's like, I prefer a nice glass of wine, which is like almost sacrilege. Serbians, Croatians, and Bosnians kind of joke that Slovenians are kind of like the stuck up people. They're kind of like the nerdy brother that got a good job in banking and he still shows up to the family reunions, but he kind of like keeps his distance and doesn't want to party too hard because he has work in the morning. Morning, and everybody else is like, ah, oh, you little wuss. But hey, they're rich, so they don't care. And that's basically it. There's so much I missed out on. I know I could have added a lot more, but that's why I kind of want you guys to explain in the comments, which is going to be a beautiful place, and it's going to have no controversy and no arguments, obviously. But what it comes down to, though, the Balkans is a place with lots of culture and history. It's just kind of jumbled up a little bit here and there. That's kind of the beauty of it all, you know? People bringing something different to the table. In the end, they all love doing their shots of rakia, and they can all all agree at least we're not under the ottoman empire anymore this was fun hope you have a good one stay cool stay tuned thanks for the video cool video awesome awesome extra awesome let's go check out the comments here i love my where's the fighting at least we aren't <laughs> At least we aren't under the Ottoman Empire anymore. Definitely, we all agree on that. I don't really agree, though. Slavic, but it is not intelligible to the Serbo. I'm not going to go through all of them. This seems to be pretty uh, um, contained and nice. Uh, cool video. Awesome channel. Geography now. Phenomenal. Amazing. I hope you guys learned something or enjoy that or can teach me something in the comments. Really do hope you're all doing well. Love y'all. Chin up if you're not. You'll be good soon. Emotions are fickle, my friend. Bye, guys.